Hello everybody and welcome to MC Webinars. Happy to have you with us today. We are um, happy to have Anthony Horn with us as our presenter. He's MC's Sales Director for Further Education. He's going to be talking about um, skills data and how we can use that in curriculum planning. If you have any questions, please put them in the questions box at the bottom of your control panel and Anthony will follow up with that after the webinar is finished. Um, you will receive recordings and slides as well. So without any further ado, hi, Anthony. Hi, Debbie, thanks very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to be here presenting this morning. And in today's session, I'm going to talk about using skills data in curriculum planning and why that's perhaps more important right now than ever before. So we'll uh, cover off a few things in today's session, including a reminder of the impact that COVID has had and continues to have on the UK labour market, why regional insight is important to the work that you do, and also why understanding the skills requirements of different types of jobs is going to help you uh, as you enter and move through curriculum planning. And then to finish up with, I'll flag a couple of ways in which MZ can help you to get to grips with that skills data. Uh, so we are here to help. Um, before we get onto those main agenda points, just a very quick introduction to MZ for those of you joining us today who aren't familiar with us. We are a global labour market data firm headquartered in the US with operations in a number of countries uh, including uh, here in the UK and our very focused mission is to spend our time investing in solid reliable labour market data and then providing that to you so that you can make more informed decisions for your business uh, and help connect uh, individuals, uh, businesses and yourselves as educational institutions with skills uh, increasingly being the central element that connects those audiences together. So to begin with, I just want to reiterate that our usual guidance when it comes to curriculum planning, uh, that is using a mixture of structural governmental data alongside more timely uh, big data like job postings data still absolutely stands true. That is the way to do it. So starting with that wide angle, broad overview picture and then digging down into uh, regions and even possibly more detailed geographies like towns and cities depending on on the region you you serve it's always the sensible way to do things when you're dealing with labor market data in your curriculum planning and then likewise understanding the industrial and the occupational makeup of your area before then digging down into more granular detail of sectors and um, curriculum and course areas. Following that structured approach, it's always going to give you that um, accurate and contextualized picture about your regional and local labor market and where you should, should fit in with that. However, it is also fair to say that granular skills insight is going to be more important and, and I dare say more useful to you this coming year than ever before when it comes to uh, curriculum planning and provision planning. And that is because of all of the labour market changes that have been going on and continue to happen as we speak. There have been such considerable changes that, that skills and changing skills demands are, are really, really uh, kind of the important thing in, in the labour market right now. So in setting the scene as to why skills are so important as part of your curriculum planning process from now and onwards through the coming months, we should start by reminding ourselves of that unique impact that COVID-19 has been having and continues to have on the labour market across the UK. The most complete data set that allows us to do that in real time is actually when we consider employer recruitment activity. So what employees have been doing, and that's job postings data. So that data allows us to see what is happening right now and what has been happening at a very detailed job level and a very detailed geographic level 
across the labour market uh, over the past few weeks and months. And that data is most useful right now because lots of the bigger governmental data sets haven't actually caught up with what is happening in the immediate term uh, and we're waiting for those to be to be published uh, as the months progress. So then if we look at that employer job postings data then in particular here new job postings over time what we see on this slide is the picture for all industry sectors across the UK from when lockdown kicked in until now. So for each of these uh, sectors, so 18 sectors on screen, the percentage number at the bottom left of each mini chart, that shows you the percentage drop from pre-lockdown recruitment levels to the lowest volume of postings. And then the percentage number at the bottom right of each mini chart, that shows the change from just prior to lockdown through to the last couple of days in terms of uh, employer job posting volumes in that sector. So what we're seeing quite clearly here is that all sectors declined massively in the weeks after lockdown. So at the top left hand side there, a sector like accommodation and food services, like hotels and restaurants, quite frankly, they saw almost a 90% drop in employee recruitment uh, at the lowest point of, uh, of, of, of employee recruitment activity for that sector, which is huge basically just completely shut down. We also see there that most sectors, so 14 of the 18 sectors on this slide, are still down in terms of unique job postings when we compare with pre-lockdown volumes of activity. So most sectors are still uh, struggling and they're still down in terms, of, uh, in terms of employee recruitment activity. But there is some positive news in that though, that the four industry sectors uh, that aren't down are back to where they were pre-lockdown. So we see uh, agriculture um, and we see health care and social care pretty much back to the volumes that they were at um, pre-lockdown. Then we see um, construction up a decent amount actually from where they were pre-lockdown and transportation and storage Kind of quite significantly up on pre-lockdown volumes. So there are some good news stories uh, at a UK-wide level um, for certain sectors. I wonder though, do you have a handle on this picture for your region for the main industry sectors that you service? We've also of course started to see the early signs of increased unemployment. So this slide is showing total claim and count volumes across the UK by month through to the end of August. And while claim and count isn't a measure of total unemployment, it's a subset of total unemployment, it is a good guide to the increasing volumes that we're already seeing. So the increasing volumes of unemployment and claimants that we're already seeing and are uh, likely to see considerably increasing over the next few months. Uh, because of course this is still uh, during a period where there's a there's a, a, an employment support scheme through the furlough scheme. Once that changes and starts to be withdrawn from different sectors, um, then of course we're going to see increased unemployment in, in, in regions. And again, I'd ask that same question, do you have a close-up view of these volumes for your local area? So just some UK-wide headlines there that sort of help set the scene of how um, the past few months have seen really um, considerable and uh, unique impacts and changes to the UK labour market, which are uh, undoubtedly going to continue going forward. What we also know is that regional labour markets are trending very differently. And that, of course, is, is super important when you're planning a curriculum, probably more so than what's happening at a UK level. So what's happening in the region that you serve? And I'm, I'm going to use a couple of regional examples just to illustrate why that's important. So firstly, we can see information on screen here about the manufacturing sector in the West Midlands. So there were around 300,000 jobs in the manufacturing sector in the West Midlands pre-COVID, which is almost double the normal concentration of manufacturing jobs if we compare the West Midlands with other regions in the UK. So what that means is that manufacturing is a highly concentrated, therefore highly important sector 
to that regional labour market. And what this first slide shows is that um, the, the chart on the left hand side here, uh, even a sector as important as manufacturing in the West Midlands took a huge hit in the weeks and months following lockdown. So from a high point of about 6,000 unique jobs being advertised um, in February of this year, that dropped right off to around 2,000 in May of this year. And it's not really recovered that much uh, through to the back end of the summer from that point. And then with a the chart on the right hand side on this slide, that's showing that all jobs in the manufacturing sector across the West Midlands were affected by this. So the blue lines, the darker blue lines are showing employer posting volumes at the beginning of the year. And then the green lines are showing those volumes for those same jobs in the summer of this year. So you can see that all jobs uh, right across the sector have, have taken a hit. It's not just one or two jobs that have been adversely affected by this, uh, by this um, situation that we've all been going through. Then if we continue on to the next slide, we're sticking with manufacturing in the West Midlands. And what this is showing that employer demand for specific skills uh, dropped considerably right across the board, across um, a wide array of skills from the beginning of the year into the summer. So just a couple of highlights to point out here. Um, with industry sectors like manufacturing and all others really, we've commonly seen considerable changes in overall volume of job postings as well as in percentage terms, which we see here. So um, it's kind of right across the board that skill demands are being hit. Um, those kind of skills that are needed in all jobs as well as very specific job uh, job specific skills, they're all kind of, uh, they all have been hit um, going through this, this, this period. So this sector, for example, saw a drop in demand for technical skills like uh, 3D modeling, and machining and hydraulics, but it also saw a significant drop in things like auditing and management. So that broad uh, range of skills being kind of adversely uh, hit is, 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 as I said, very common. And that will start to change. You know, that's not always going to be a negative picture, but that's going to be really useful for you to get a grip of when you're planning provision. What are the skills that are needed? So if we're thinking of curriculum planning in that context, a couple of things spring to my mind. Firstly, in the short term, could you use this detailed picture to better understand the impact on industry sectors that you serve in your area? You can see here how skill demands have changed and you could think about how you can help employers and individuals to realign their skill set uh, to skills that are actually in demand. And then perhaps thinking slightly longer term, could you be thinking of how to work with the manufacturing sector in this example as it begins to recover to identify which jobs and skills become a priority for them in the short term and which of those skills that they've traditionally relied on actually might need a change as their business model might change and how you as a local skills leader can help them with that and can help uh, their employees transition from, uh, from, from skill X to skill Y. So thinking of that recovery angle, things are starting to co turn a corner in many regions uh, in a positive direction, which is obviously great news for us all. But again, that picture is, is going to be very different for different regions in different areas within regions even. And so here's an example of that. If we consider the 10 jobs that have seen the most growth in demand from employers over the past couple of months, Firstly, uh, in Manchester, we see here that the 10 jobs that have that have grown the most in demand from from employers in, in the Manchester city region. Um, if we then view that side by side with a, with another locality. So here are the 10 jobs most in demand in Dagenham over the past couple of months. Two completely different lists. I don't think there's a there's a, a job that's the same uh, on, on either list. Obviously, some similarities there, but but different jobs. So all of these jobs, of course, then have their own specific skill needs. Um, and, and that's the kind of uh, skill need and, and an employee need that you can help address as local skill leaders. And that point, I think, is a um, very important one that different types of jobs have different skill requirements with the changes to the labour market across the board that we saw there in earlier slides, 
those skill changes have been much more considerable than in any normal year. So that fact that you kind of need to get a grip on what's needed at a local level is, is probably even more in focus than it, than it ever has been before. And because pretty much all jobs have seen some sort of disruption, so all jobs across all sectors, as we saw in an earlier slide, we've, we've seen skill demands changing again, probably more than, than uh, in, a, in, a, in a typical year. So to illustrate that again as an example as to why that's important, we can consider different types of jobs. So firstly, um, higher skilled, higher paying jobs across the UK throughout this year. Um, how have skill demands in those types of jobs changed? Well, we see here digital skills kind of consistently near the top in terms of employee demand for that uh, higher paying, higher skilled jobs, but also in we, we, we see something really interesting like welfare jumping right up the league table there in terms of um, uh, importance and demand from employers. But again, perhaps an, an understandable skill increasing in, import in importance given uh, all of those challenges that we've been facing. Then for uh, kind of uh, middle skilled jobs, we see lots of technical skills on this list uh, and, and lots more healthcare related skills coming through. And again, perhaps not surprising that specific nursing skills have been most in demand this year and more in demand than ever before. And then for lower paid labour intensive jobs, again, we see a completely different uh, set of skills being demanded. Again, specific experience and skills that are needed for these front facing uh, jobs with high levels of, of human interaction uh, and something like uh, uh, PPE is an obvious uh, an obvious example of that and unsurprisingly that's that's jumped up in importance as as the months have gone on. So just examples at a UK level again there of, of how skills demands for different types of jobs will change and why it's important perhaps to get a real handle on that as you're thinking about your, your short term and your medium term and even your long term um, curriculum planning. That level of detail at a regional level is, is, is going to give you that unique uh, starting point and unique uh, reference point on an ongoing basis for curriculum planning, again in that short term and, and, and medium term. Because of those unique changes to the labour market we've seen this year, it's going to be an ever moving picture. So finally then I just want to highlight a couple of ways in which EMSI can practically help you to identify and understand that skills picture in your local area. And firstly many of you will be uh, familiar with our uh, analyst and our FE analyst tool. So the, the main workflows in FE analyst are going to help you to build up that regional skills picture. Um, just picking a few out, the curriculum overview workflow is going to show you how your curriculum plan stacks up against jobs in your local area and how those jobs are changing. The course validation workflow is going to tell you more about how industries and the employers in those industries are trending uh, and how jobs are trending against specific courses and course areas. And the course design workflow, that's going to give you more specific information about what specific skills are relevant to your courses and your course areas and how those skills demands are changing as we've seen in, in many of my previous slides. And taking that a step further and, and being able to dig deeper, the job postings workflow is going to allow you to do that. So lots of the data that I've shown this morning is taken from the job postings workflow and that's going to allow you to, to see more detail about how skill demands are changing on a monthly basis, what specific skills are in demand in your area, who are the named employers that are recruiting for those jobs and perhaps what specific localities in your service region are seeing uh, different changes in demands for different types of jobs. So for those of you who are, are accessing FE Analyst already, drop us a line with, with any questions about that and we can, we can point you in the right direction. For those of you who don't use the tool right now, I'd, I'd be delighted to talk to you about that. Then secondly, we have also developed a brand new consultancy report that can sit alongside Analyst, an FE Analyst, or equally it can stand alone as a, as a guidance piece, as a standalone consultancy report. And, and this uh, telling us in the past few weeks, and that's really been around getting a clear handle on 
really what's happening locally so what's going on in our local area which is exactly what i've been talking about today and that importance of regional detail and then fe leaders have also said how useful it would be to have a sort of quick snapshot view of, of what's changed in their area just to help supercharge that upcoming curriculum planning process so we've we've designed a report to, to hopefully help with that uh, and, and it's going to give you kind of answers to sort of three questions so what does your labour market look like what has traditionally been the most important jobs and skills over the past five years and what impact has Covid had on your local area secondly how exposed are local industry sectors to ongoing disruption because of how your local industry sectors are, are, are made up and then thirdly at an occupational job level what about specific jobs which of those are most at risk what does that workforce look like uh, and what are the skills that employees are, are requesting right now so that's going to show you the the, 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 the the stuff you're going to see in this next few slides so traditionally what does your labor market look like and again as i said earlier on near the beginning we shouldn't forget that structural view in the current climate because um uh having a view of how your regional labor market is traditionally structured is going to be important going forward uh, for a number of different reasons what are the skills that have been most in demand in recent years and then how has all of that changed because of uh, covid uh, kicking in in in, uh, in the last uh, the last uh, few weeks and months and then really importantly as we saw earlier on on some of those uh, uh, visual slides what are the specific skill demands for different types of jobs in your local service region right now as the labor market begins to turn around how are they changing uh, and what are the different types of, of skills for different types of jobs that, that your region needs then if we start to think about helping you to, to consider the future so what is the future going to look like in your region well we don't want to consider just the short-term impact um, on, on things like job postings but we also want to look at um, the exposure of your regional economy uh, given the disruptions caused by the pandemic and lockdown so this section of the consultancy report is going to look at how your region is exposed given the different mix of the job roles uh, and, and uh, how, how susceptible they are to uh, ongoing disruption and then how um, concentrated jobs are in particular industry sectors in your region so from remember that manufacturing example early from the west midlands which um, sectors in your region are really highly concentrated and therefore are really important um, to your local labor market we can map those against things like uh, furlough volumes to see which industry sectors are, are going to be most exposed and how uh, how how important those exposed industries are to your regional labor market and then third section of the new report is about looking at specific jobs in more detail so which jobs in your region are most at risk um, based on how uh, your regional uh, industry and occupational um, uh, labor market is set up but also not just the jobs that are most at risk but the intersection of jobs that are at risk and those jobs that employ lots of people locally um, and we report on things like um, the age profile of workers in those jobs typical average existing qualification level of workers in those jobs so that's going to be pointing you towards how you might you might best design recovery uh, provision and perhaps even access funding for different age groups depending on the, the typical age range of, of the workforce to help design and deliver that skills based recovery that we that we're all uh, passionate about so that's the kind of general content and theme of that new consultancy report um, whether you are an existing client or not please do drop me a line to find out more about that in summary then um, I think the kind of the number one takeaway is that you know skills are, are extremely important and regional labor markets are trending very differently right now when we compare them to um, just the kind of UK picture regions are very different and that's really important uh, for, for you as a, as a uh, skills leader in your local area to understand um, uh, at a sector level uh, things uh, like furlough and unemployment are going to pan out very differently in different regions so on screen here just an example of that from from uh, from a LEP regional perspective uh, just another example of how regions are uh, uh, trending very differently at the moment and then as we saw earlier on at a skill level 
uh, different regions will trend differently and different jobs are already trending very differently in terms of the, the skill demands that employers have for those jobs. So it's that skill level insight that we think is going to give your curriculum planning an edge uh, this year. And all of the regionally specific stuff that we've we've covered there, that's not suddenly going to stop, uh, and it's going to continue to to evolve uh, over the coming weeks and months. Uh, and we'll will will change more in some regions than others, and certain sectors and certain jobs will 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 be very different in in, in different regions. And that's that's the key takeaway. But the good news is that we are absolutely here to help. So um, do drop me a line with any specific questions about today's session I'd, I'd be delighted to chat about that uh, as Debbie mentioned at the beginning you'll receive uh, copies of, of, of the recording today uh, and, and uh, hopefully I can pick up any individual conversations from that point but in the meantime uh, thanks for joining us on this morning's MZ webinar and I hope you found it useful